welcome to Future Talk. This is the program that examines the global impact of technology, both for good and for bad, and tries to see just where the new technology is leading us. On today's program, we're going to talk about nanotechnology, which is the science of manipulating objects on a very small scale down to the level of individual atoms. We'll talk about the latest advances in nanotech, what this new science is capable of achieving, whether this technology poses any risks, and whether there are any social or ethical issues that need to be considered. I have two guests. Brian Wong is a longtime futurist who's been involved with nanotech since the 1990s. He's director of research at the Lifeboat Foundation, which encourages new technologies while also raising awareness about the possible dangers of those technologies. He's a member of the Center for Responsible Technology Task Force and a member of the advisory board of the Nanoethics Group. He writes extensively about nanotech on his futurist blog, nextbigfuture.com. Wasik Bakari is a managing partner at Clean Tech Circle, where he develops investment strategies in the fields of nanotechnology and clean technology. He has a PhD in physics from MIT and is listed as an inventor on eight U.S. patents. He was a co-founder of the MIT Stanford Berkeley Nanotechnology Forum, and he also works with the Presidential Council of Advisors on Science and Technology. Gentlemen, welcome. Thank you. Brian, let me start with you. What would you say is the most exciting development going on in nanotechnology right now? Well, I'd like to pick um, two of the main things, actually. Um, one would be um, something that's already emerged commercially, which is carbon nanotubes, which has many applications. And it's something that um, can revolutionize the way we build things because it's far lighter and stronger than, than steel. Um, it's also being um, uh, made into mats and to um, wires um, by a company called Nanocomp. We, we actually have some uh, graphics of carbon nanotubes. Can we show those? We have a couple of slides showing what... Uh, okay, so there's one right there. This is obviously an artist's depiction, not a real carbon nanotube. Mm -hmm. But So these are hollow tubes made right. of carbon atoms. And what are right. they actually uh, going to be used for? Um, because uh, they're basically one large molecule, because they're um, a ring of carbon atoms and then connected to millions of other carbon atoms um, in a tube, they're very strong because carbon is the strongest bond, um, you know, diamond, and car carbon nanotubes is a form of, of that, of, of carbon. Um, so they can make things far lighter and stronger than you could otherwise make things. They you can mean also like a building material? Like a building material. And also the company that's going to use it to um, replace copper in airplanes and satellites by making lighter um, electrical shielding. So, so this is not conductive, it, it shields against electric flow? Right, depending on how you tune the property. In this case, they're going to shield against um, lightning strikes and other electrical interference. So this is sort of a versatile material, a, a basic raw element of nanotechnology that has many uses? Yes, it does, yes. Mm. And the other one is something that's still in research, but that's the DNA nanotechnology where they're taking DNA and making structural material out of it. Um, they, they have something called DNA origami, where they basically make like puzzle tiles out of DNA and then fit them together. Um, An example that was done a few years back was to make a map of the United States at the nano scale out of DNA. But in more recent um, research, they've made that into three-dimensional objects, as well as to position gold nanoparticles um, into a, a lattice in precise position using DNA. So they're using real DNA? I using mean, real DNA. Do they yeah. use the life properties of DNA or just the structure by which it They're using the, the structure, the, the assembly structure of DNA in order to, to mm -hmm. make uh, objects and also to create uh, DNA that, that moves either by walking or arms that can position other objects. Mm -hmm. um, this is still an early stage and they, mm -hmm. they haven't been able to scale it up into mm -hmm. um, a larger thing, but it's something that is a very exciting area that's developing. So, Wasik, what do you think are some of the applications that we're going to be seeing in the next few years, things that will become commonplace in our lives? Nanotechnology is something that impacts all different applications, all different industries. Um, 
I think we will see applications in semiconductors, in energy, in pharmaceuticals, and in diagnostics in the very near future. In fact, some of them are already here. Uh, apart from that, we will also see applications in just basic materials, uh, from everything from fabrics to building materials. So let me give you some examples of semiconductors. Mm -hmm. In semiconductors, using nanotechnology, we can create uh, data storage mechanisms which are far more dense than what we have right now. For example, imagine if you can store a bit of information per atom or even per 100 atoms, then we would have data storage capability which would be orders of magnitude higher than what we have today. Similarly, if you make devices that are small enough, then these devices manifest quantum properties, which means we can do anything from fast switching to new analogs of GMR mechanism to even quantum computing. So this really gives us a lot more flexibility in computing in general. A lot more flexibility. And as also as you go smaller and smaller, your energy requirements also come down. I've also heard that we might be on the verge of having nanotechnology factories that fit on your desktop, like desktop printing was all the rage a few That's years right. ago. We might be talking about desktop manufacturing. In fact, we have a video that illustrates a conception of desktop manufacturing. We're going to show that video and then come back and discuss it. So let's go ahead and roll that tape. 